Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Facebook live event with Amy Sows and Amy Bachman So and quote, and of course, I'm Amy. So today we're going to be doing some applique um, by machine, right? Traditional applique, some hints, some tips, um, things that um, can make your life a little bit easier. For those of you who don't have machine embroidery or you just want to do something quick, we have so many great stitches on our sewing machines that we never ever use. So kind of our attempt to get you to use that. The quilt behind me, I'll show you in a little bit. It's a class that um, Sharon did and it's going to be a, hi Elaine, it's going to be a class, um, it's a scan and cut class and it's so slick how it goes together. It makes a very easy quilt project. Ooh, Chesapeake, Virginia. Hi, Diana. Roberta from North Carolina, Kansas City. You guys are from everywhere. Miss Mary Maryland's local. <laughs> we love our customers. Nancy, I'm glad you're here too. I'm super glad you're here. So today we're going to talk about applique, right? You've seen some of Sharon's tea towel samples for our tea towel club. Um, I have some of those today too, but I have some other examples of some fun materials to use for applique and um, how to turn a corner and how to do a circle. So a little bit of information today. So I'm sewing on a Janome 15,000. It's my old Janome 15,000. I have the new M17, but guess what? It's so big, I can't film with it in the studio. <laughs> I can't use it. There's not enough room for cameras and everything on there. Pat, Colin Denver's back in the house. Manitoba, Canada. I love Canada. Um, a, a long time ago, a long time ago, Ed and I were in um, Toba, Toba Mori, Canada, and it was so stunning there. Ed was wreck diving in Lake Huron, and um, I've never seen water like that in my life. It was a beautiful, beautiful place. Okay, so let's get busy and talk about applique, right? So there's different there's different types of applique. You guys saw, if you saw the Facebook post a couple days ago about the sweatshirt we made in the 80s, the reverse applique and the fabric underneath, it's called a blooming shirt or blooming sweatshirt. That was one of the particular kinds. But let me show you some of the things that you can applique on. How about the rope bowls and rope mats by just taking a little panel of fabric right? And they're just stitched on. So that's also an applique is just applying one layer to another, right? But this is an idea. And I think Reen from Embroidery Garden is doing a rope bowl class, maybe a collaboration with someone else, but I love making the rope bowls, right? They are just so much fun. This is, this is also applique. This is raw edged applique. This is a class, a class. This was camp sewing quilt and it must have rained 10 inches while we were there. We were outside sewing. It was cold and crazy. So that was pre-COVID. So we're hoping to kind of bring it back. But this is raw edge, which means it's just straight stitched around. You know what? That's silly. Let's go over here. It's just straight stitched around. Right. And you can see a little bit of the edges lifting, which I was way OK with that. It's a little more rustic, but I want to bring this project back because it, it was it is so pretty. It's an off set table runner. And in the middle were acorns. And then you have it on the other end. So you can see with the raw edge how it curled up. And again, I was OK with that. There is no fusible web on here. This is just. Um, heavily starched. And again, I used my scan and cut like I always do to cut things out. Oops, I'm knocking over the entire display. Hey, bear with me. Bear with me. All right. So this is that quilt that we talked about. Um, Sharon and I did a project what seems to be a million years ago. And these were done with some decorative stitches. You can see these just aren't straight stitches. It's just not stat satin stitches. I want you guys to be able to kind of use those decorative stitches, decorative stitches to quilt um, the seam. And it's called mix, mix match flowers because it's the same pattern. 
And then we use the outside of one, the inside of the next. So we mix and match up those, those pieces. I think the whole display is gonna fall down behind me. So if it does, <laughs> don't laugh too loud. <laughs> All right, how, let's see, we got Missouri. Any questions? You guys like applique? Oh, Edita, you are so awesome. Um, PJ is going to call you in a little bit. Um, Edit is in beautiful Hawaii, and we did not want to call at 9 a.m. our time. So <laughs> she's going to call you a little bit to get you all set up for the cruise. All right. Oh, so Ly Lydia loves raw edge applique. You know what? Me too. Uh, it's quick and easy, and um, there's so many layers and depth and what do we call it? distinction you can add to your projects? It's, it's okay. Ed came in to rescue me if that whole, that whole thing starts falling down back there. Um, all right. So, so this was yesterday. I showed a vacuum to clean out the sewing machine. What brand did you suggest? I don't know that ours has a brand. It's just called mini vac attachment. And I don't recall a maker on it. I know that sounds weird, but you can, what the big thing is, is make sure it has like the one that Ed used yesterday, we had to use a shop vac, but this one has a reducer. So like it'll go into a bigger vacuum or a skinnier vacuum. My one at home, I have it set up to work with my regular, um, um, my Dyson, the little handheld Dyson thing. Um, good. Okay, so let's get busy. So different materials that you can use for, um, don't hesitate to use things like fleeces, furs. The only thing is this is a piece of fabric left over from the serger box for January because um, we're doing a hoodie. This sweatshirt fleece is great. I, I like this fuzzy side. I would put some fusible web on the back and then it's no longer stretch, right? So you want to stabilize it. But even if you're doing embroidery in the hoop, this makes great texture for animals and flowers, especially if you're doing something for a baby, they love to feel different um, things. This is heat transfer glitter vinyl. And you're thinking that is nuts, but glitter vinyl is one of the few vinyls you can take off the carrier sheet. Glitter and flock, flock, um, glitter and flock, you can take off the carrier sheet and use it as applique. So this is great when you're making like Christmas ornaments and snowflakes. And the fucking's great when you're making animals and trees and things like that. Cork is also another nice applique fabric. You're just going to um, use um, just a straight stitch to use it. But cork, if you're doing architectural type looking things, sidewalks. Um, anything that has needs that kind of hard construction look. And then fusible webs, um, steam -a seam is what this one is with the grid. And steam -a seam actually is a two stick process. So you peel it once and you fuse this to your fabric, right? And then you peel it again. And this same stick um, stays. So what that does is you can now lay out all your pieces, make a decision. Do I like them there? Not like them there. And then when you press them, then it's permanent. But this helps you lay things out and they don't fall off every time you sneeze. So that's it. All right. I have a couple things here. When we teach applique, the first thing you need to learn is inside and outside corners. Okay. So we have the letter O, which is perfect for doing outside circles. And I have the letter L, even though it's backwards. Um, is good for turning. You have to learn to turn inside corners and outside corners. Here we go. That's better. So when it comes to applique, I'm just going to run do a row of a couple different stitches so you guys can see where I'm at. I do use a paper stabilizer when I'm doing applique, especially on thin cotton, like quilt blocks and things like that. If I was doing, um, and I starched my background fabric, if I was doing this on something that's firm, I wouldn't need a stabilizer. But since this is just plain old fabric, I need a stabilizer. So let's talk about stitches first. So the first stitch is, oops, didn't plug in my foot control, so that doesn't help. Here we go. So the first stitch is traditional. You guys know what a straight stitch looks like, right? So this is a... Um, 
sometimes they call it a buttonhole stitch, a pin stitch, uh, a, you know, it's not quite a ladder stitch, but you can see how it has those edges. So the straight part goes on the edge of your applique and the pin comes over to hold the applique down. Um, on the Janome, and a lot of machines have every different thickness, size, known to man. You should be able to mirror image these. This is a super thick one. And so you have different weights. So I like to do a little test pattern like this. And I will ease, even write the stitch number next to it. And so next time I want to applique, I can see exactly what I want to do. Okay, so you can see how much thicker this one is. This is thin. Um, there are crazy people out there that do this tiny, tiny, I'm not gonna say crazy, that wasn't very nice of me, but do this itty bitty, like they wanna like the look of like hand applique invisible. And so you can do this tiny, tiny stitch. And I like to do it, there's 100 weight thread now and 60 weight thread. You cannot even see this. Now I'm using a 40 weight thread so you guys could see it, right? But when people do applique with this 100 weight thread or 60 weight thread, it is totally invisible. So it is really makes a nice, but see how tiny that is? But if this was 100 weight thread in the same color as your applique, you would never ever see that. So if you like to do like hand needle turn applique, then you can um, you can kind of duplicate that um, with that tiny stitch. So um, Becky calls it, is that a blanket stitch? Yes, it's a blanket stitch, a pin stitch, an heirloom applique. I mean, there's all different kinds of names for it, but yes, a blanket stitch is the most common um, for that. The other is a blind hem, right? And again, this has to do with if you're turning under the raw edge and you want this itty bitty tiny look now on my machine it's already set up but you can go into your um, woven blind hem and set that up but now let's go to the fun part let's find some fun stitches now my machine goes up to a nine millimeter. And I will tell you that working with something that wide is very difficult when you are trying to turn corners. So this is, uh, you, you may call it an entredeau stitch if you're an heirloom sewer or a little diamond pattern. Every stitch has a function by the way and has an official name. Just everybody calls it different. So this is one of the stitches that, that Sharon used on that mix and match flower quilt that I showed you guys. And so that is a great stitch for doing applique. All right, so Marilyn Douglas asked the million dollar question, is there a way to keep steam and seam from gumming up your needles? Um, no, and gumming up. So I keep a cotton ball with a little bit of um, rubbing alcohol by my machine and I just kind of wipe my needle. But yes, the steam seam will be pulled up into your needle. Um, if it's pressed well, you shouldn't get any of that. If you are just sticking your fabric down, this little piece has steam seam on it. So it's been fused once, I peel off the paper. See how sticky it is? If I put it down and yes, it sticks. If I don't fuse that, I'm gonna get a lot of gumming. So I fuse it first. To do that. You can also use Wonder Under, Heat and Bond, Hot Fix. Hot Fix Light is one of my favorites when I'm doing quilts because there is no bulk. Red Label, Heat and Bond is no sew. So please be careful what you're picking with the no sew. So I'm going to do this wide just so you can see it. But this is, um, okay, so I might as well answer some questions first. Um, Annette says, if 100 weight thread in the top, what in the bobbin? So I probably would put 100 weight in the bobbin if you're wanting to reduce bulk. If you think about it, the 100 weight thread, the bobbin thread is going to control it. So it's either going to pull it all to the back. You have to do a little stitch, but, um, you know, but I, I, I do match my bobbin weight thread or at least put an 80 or if you can get a pre-wound embroidery bobbin, that's 80 weight thread. If you don't care that's white because not nobody's going to see it, that's a better balance for that. 
would that stitch hold up if the item is used a lot? Absolutely, because you have to figure it's already fused, right? If you're fusing something down, you can get away with anything. Yes, Karen, I love hot fix. It's not as easy to find from my distributors. I have to order it direct. Um, and, and a couple scan and cut boxes, you're going to get another uh, piece of it because we love it. Thank you, Linda. I appreciate that. All right. So this stitch is really wide, but I want to show you this. You have these grass stitches or these uneven stitches. These are great when you're doing things like grass or animals and you want to give them a little bit of a fur. This one has a straight edge and then it has the kind of the fuzz to the other side. Let me see if I can grab another one here. I think it's in my app. Problem is there's 20,000 stitches to choose from, right? And we love that about our machines. It's it's very common. Someone comes in and goes, well, I just, I don't want to, I don't use a lot of things. So I don't want to use, I just want to, you know, five stitches in my sewing machine. Unfortunately, the manufacturers don't think that way. <laughs> so if you want features like scissors and um, automatic pivot, like you'll see my machine will go up and the foot will go up and down by itself. Unfortunately, those come with all the stitches. So whether you like it or not, so you can see how my machine comes up and pivots. This is the best thing ever when I start to show you. Let me just stitch the double-sided one, then I'll move on. Cause you guys get the idea about using the different stitches, but I want you to test them, right? Um, And it comes down to personality, it comes down to type, it comes down to whatever. So you can see these are, this is that kind of ragged stitch, which is great for grass and animals. This has the raggedness, but it has a straight edge. So that, sometimes that's easier for people to use. This is just monster heavy, um, like a blanket stitch, which again, all these decorative stitches can be used in all the ways. So let's see, Lori, because I used steam a seam and didn't like and didn't seem like I did it correctly. Could you show the correct way to apply it? So basically what I did is I fused this, the steam -a seam onto my fabric, right? Let me just peel this off. I don't think I have a piece here. We'll just pretend this is it. I take the steam -a seam on here, put on the back and it is a light fuse. You are not doing this for 15, 20, se 20 seconds at a time. You're gonna lightly warm it up. It's going to melt into your fabric. You're gonna cut out, cut out your shape, you're going to cut out your shape, right? Peel the paper off. And then you're going to go back to your iron and you're going to fuse it for about 15 seconds and it's done. If you over fuse it, what happens is all that fusible goes into your fabric and then it becomes not fused anymore. If that makes any sense. A lot of people don't like steam a seam. I'm going to be honest with you because it's a two step process. But when I lay things out like that table runner or like, um, like Sharon's quilt behind me. I love that because I can get my placement done before I fuse instead of fusing and making a mistake. If you happen to fuse an applique in the wrong spot and it happens to the best of us, you go, you hit it and like, no, I, that piece doesn't go there. Don't stress, turn your fabric upside down. You're going to go get a Q-tip and you're going to get some acetate fingernail polish remover. It's not going to hurt your fabric. You can do a little test if it makes you feel better. Take that Q-tip with acetate on it and rub it on the back of your fabric where that fusible is, and you'll see it, it'll start to release itself. Okay, it's just simple chemistry. You have a fusible and then you have a dissolvent, right? So that's how you're gonna get that off if you make a mistake. The same thing kind of works with um, heat transfer vinyl. If you make a mistake on a shirt, they do make vinyl remover, but in a push comes to shove, fingernail polish is the way to go. All right, I have some shapes here. Whoops, keep showing the scan and cut. I have my shapes. I have a squiggly leaf. This is the same leaf that was on that table runner. The letter O and the letter L. I'm going to start with that because starting and stopping, you never want to start and stop on a corner. Okay, I'm just going to do the pin stitch or the blanket stitch just so you can see where I'm going. And you know what? We're not going to do that. I'm going to do a traditional satin stitch. Just give me one second. 
um, someone was messing with me and now I have all the, the tapers on. All right, let's go applique. All right, so, and let's talk about size. This is set up for 3.5. This is a pretty small letter L. You never want to start on the end and you never want to start in a corner. You want to start in a space that is easy for you to um, stop and start on. So I'm just going to, my needle is in the right position. It's going to swing just past my fabric. Some people do 50-50, half on the applique, half on the fabric. That is your call. I'm going to lengthen my stitch length a little bit so it doesn't take forever. Now, when I get to this corner, it is a inside corner. One step at a time. And again, I have that pivot turned on my machine. If you don't have that, it is time for a new machine. And if you don't know which way to put your needle, when, as soon as I spin this, my needle is going to swing and I'm going to miss that whole back piece of a missing piece. So I want my needle to the outside. I'm going to pivot. I just lied to you, I think. I got so much going on today. Yes, if I pivot, I'm going to have a big gap. So we are going to put that needle the other direction. Pin it. Oh, I don't have any stabilizer underneath here. That is not good. So let's do that. My apologies, but I saw what happened. I saw that fabric start to tuck to tunnel. And that is never good, right? So if you do have to stop, go back in a few stitches because when you hit your reverse, everybody has that little circle on their sewing machine that ties a knot. If you reverse, you're gonna have a fat clump on your sewing machine. Let's see if I can turn a better corner here. Let's get my head in the game, Amy. We're packing for the cruise today and there's so much going on. I'm a little distracted. So outside corner, needle on the outside. I'm going to pivot. That needle swings into the last stitches that I did. Needle to the outside. Spin my fabric. You are not pushing and pulling. The machine is doing all the work. Okay. I don't want to see this. When I see this, that's when the stitches get all crazy. Okay, so that's turning your inside and outside corners. Now, with that being said, this is 40 weight thread. So you can see here where I started to pull. See how the stitches got funny? See how nice that corner is, right? Your sewing machine stitches are calibrated for 40 weight thread. So I have just bobbin weight thread in my bobbin and 40 weight on top. If you do not... If you use a lighter thread, you may have to shorten your stitch length a little bit just to make it happen. All right, so I'm going to do a pin stitch for this one. And again, I'm going to start on the longest edge of my O. I don't want to start on a hard corner. I guess I should have finished the L so you could have seen it, but we'll see what happens. All right, this is pivoting, pivoting 101. This is the difference between you are not Dale Earnhardt. You are not going into the corner yanking that fabric like this. You are not spinning it just like this. That's a no-no because you get distortion. You want to pivot. We're going to come in here, always on the straight part. You pivot on the straight edge, a couple stitches, pivot on the straight edge, pivot on the straight edge. As soon as you feel the need to twist that fabric, you pivot and you're letting the feed dogs do all the work. Now, if you want, you can really think about it. Like, okay, so this does one, two, three, forward, left. One, two, three. So I know three and the next step is gonna be my little pin. Two, three, bing. One, two, pivot. One, two, three. I know in the third one is my pivot time. That's if you want perfect spacing every time. you got to learn to do pivot. You have to learn to do that. So this is pivot. 
whoops, where are we at? This is Pivot. See how nice and perfect that is? This is Dale Earnhardt, right? This is this is NASCAR right here. And you don't get that nice finish. You get clunky edges, right? So Pivot is your answer for doing round shapes, okay? And again, if you're looking for a new sewing machine, you want to get that that pivot feature. Every sewing machine calls it something different, right? So here's a couple of from the tea towel of the month that Sharon um, that Sharon does. And let me back up a little bit, right? So this was December maybe. So this is just a tiny zigzag and a straight stitch. So your zigzag doesn't have to be this monster thick solid because we're using fusibles, right? That makes a world of difference. This is one of my favorites because I love ice cream. I love ice cream. This has a little pretty border on it. Sharon tries to add a little extra detail. So here is a little heavier satin stitch right here. Here is satin with a mix of a triple stitch. And it builds a little bit of dimension and the cross hatching through the cone. Don't be afraid to add details. Okay, so that is, here's our watermelon. And again, a, a much looser zigzag, almost like a tackle twill stitch because we want it to be light and airy. And here's bunny rabbit. Everybody loves a bunny. And then here's using some of your decorative stitches to add, add detail, like even on the eggs. It's kind of hard to see because of the angle. Here is 4th of July or Memorial Day, whatever, right? And a little bit of glitter. Don't be afraid of metallic threads. And again, look at Sharon's points. Those pivot points, points are the hardest things to do, right? And that's all about, it's the same thing as turning corners. So this is, um, this was November's. And here is that heat transfer glitter that we use as part of the applique. It doesn't even need stitched down because when that thing's on, it is permanent, permanent, right? And then um, again, metallic thread in the snowflakes. And then this is the one that is shipping in January. For those of you in the T-Tail Club, I'm sorry, it's shipping a little bit late, um, but here is the blanket stitch, right? And then blanket stitch on the letters and then adding the details for the threads. Now for the tea towel of the month, we have, we have, we haven't, we're not changing the price. It's $24.95 for the towel. It's a Dunrobin, I'm saying cotton towel. You get a very nice towel. You get a five or $6 towel, plus all your pieces um, to do it. But now we are adding machine embroidery. For those of you like hooped embroidery, this is the same love towel. I just started stitching it out. I have to do the video so I can upload it for your class as you belong. Can we see the, no, can't see the threads. There you go. You see a little bit of texture right in there. So we are adding hooped applique. For those of you who have embroidery and you enjoy doing the machine, I love doing machine applique. I like doing it just because it's relaxing to me. And when we go camping, camping, I lose that term loosely. By the time we get in the RV and unpack everything, it's nicer than my house. So the boys go off kayaking and fishing and I have quiet time, which I relish. Um, I get out my little sewing machine and I just love doing applique because I have my scanning cut too, right? So um, things like that table runner, I enjoy doing it because it just calms my mind which some of those who know me is a very difficult task. There are squirrels between my ears because I juggle so many things. But anyhow, so Angela says, oh, I'm glad you added machine applique. Yes. Right now I'm digitizing them myself until I can find a digitizer. Who wants to do them? All right. So that is your basic applique. Anybody have any questions? I am Excited and sad at the same time to say that the Serger subscription box has sold out. So it'll be a couple months before we can invite more guests in, which is always a good thing and a bad thing, right? Because I don't, I don't want anybody to be disappointed, but it's sold out. But I will tell you, um, 
we that was January, February, March. So March will be the next surgery box. I did order more supply. So hopefully we can get some more people in. The um, tea towel of the month is open every every month. We just let it open for everybody because it's an easy kit to, to put together. And then the scan and cut subscription is open. It'll be the, you can join us for the class or the class in the box. Um, and for the next week, I think we can let people in. So we have about 30 spots we can fill and then I got to close it. Um, I know Fran can't wait to get her towel. I know Fran. So how things work at Amy Sews is you log into a separate website and, you know, log in and password, just like you do if you're buying from Embroidery Garden or um, another place you get classes and things from. And once you log in, you have your library where you keep all your classes. And um, so you can watch them at any time, right? Because life gets in the way. Second Tuesday of the month, we're live with the box opening and everybody can see that. So next Tuesday, you can see what's in the serger box. And then the third Tuesday is the live class and it's private inside of Amy Sews where it is recorded and you can keep watching it. So you can always hang out with us at support at Amy Sews. And I appreciate it. You guys sprinkle these videos out to the universe because the more we grow, the more I can do and um, get other people to help doing, right? And if you use the word share, then we're giving away at the end of the week after the crystal workshop, we're giving away a fat quarter pack of 40 fat quarters. So the crystal workshop is Sunday. It's only $10. Anybody can join. I do use my brother scan and cut and I do show software, but if you have a Cricut or a silhouette or something like that, you're still going to get something out of it. How to do the crystals. We do have some um, starter crystal kits for $15. They will not make it of course in time for Sunday. And then we have the elusive brother crystal quit kit behind me. Uh, brother is no longer shipping them. I happen to secure um, some of them. And what this has is the activation code. So you can instantly do crystals. So I'll be showing the crystals. I'll be showing the dime cut and stitch software, canvas workspace, how you can get stuff done. Woo, but that is Sunday. And this has been a long week. We have never opened all three enrollments at the same time. So it's been a little crazy here, but it's so exciting to grow. And I appreciate all of you who subscribe and spend your hard earned money with me. It humbles me, but I love this community and I love what I do. So I'm just grateful. I have Jim and Agnes and everybody here at works here to share with what's going on. If you need me for any reason, support at Amy Sews um, is the best way. We're getting ready for our January cruise, which is sold out and May, May cruise, there's two. There's a nine day to Bermuda, which is Becky Thompson from, um, Power Tools with Thread, myself, I think, some, oh, Juju, Designs by Juju. Yeah, that's what we're doing in May. And then back to back, as soon as we're done with Becky and Juju, we go right into um, Creative Applique has joined us for So and Sell 15. So we're excited about that. Amy, uh, I'll be there. Jim will be there. And um, we have machines on board to do Creative Applique projects. Um, and we're excited about that as well. So go to sewandsellcruises.com and you can check everything out. We do not upsell the cruise. You pay what Royal Caribbean charges us to put you on board. And then there's just a kit fee, right? And a kit fee, I mean like a class fee, machine use fee, goodie bag, kits, all that kind of stuff is that, what that is include. So, oh, Elaine, thank you. That means a lot. And um, Jim and I are working on some retreats. Um, that you can come and hang out with us for a couple days. And um, I'm also looking at do one, doing one in the middle of the, not middle of the country, like Pigeon Forge neighborhood. Um, see if we can't take them on the road to catch up with some of you people. I want to meet everybody. All righty, everybody will have a terrific day because the more you know, the more you sell. <laughs>